Hello you guys, welcome to our channel. Today we are here with a highly requested and a very special recipe. This is our goat meat or mutton curry recipe. This is a very popular dish in my household. I like to cook this dish in a stovetop pressure cooker but if you don't have a pressure cooker at home I'll be giving you all the tips and tricks you need to cook this at home without a pressure cooker even though I really recommend you using a stovetop pressure cooker or an instant pot if you have one at home all the details of this recipe including the ingredient list and some special tips will be given on our blog so make sure to check that out now let's get started to start off, we're going to need some whole spices. First, I have some cardamom pods here. I am taking about four of the cardamom pods. Cardamom pods are very aromatic with a hint of sweetness to it. Cardamom is one of my favorite spices to use. Then we're going to take some whole black pepper, some bay leaves. I'm taking about two large bay leaves, a large stick of cinnamon, and some cumin seeds. Then of course you're going to need some goat meat or mutton and then you would want to cut them into your desired size pieces. Mine were cut into these cubes when I purchased them at the store so I had no other choice but to keep them like that but you can cut them however you would like. I do recommend you don't cut the pieces too large as smaller pieces absorbs the flavor from the curry much better. And in my opinion, it tastes much better that way as well. Then we're going to need some dahi or card. It's usually available at any Indian grocery stores. But if you can't find them or if it's not available where you live, then you can definitely substitute this with plain Greek yogurt. It tastes almost the same and also will give you the similar marinating effect. Goat meat is a pretty tough meat. It takes for Ever to cook and tenderize. To help that process, we're going to marinate the meat with a card. Gently massage the yogurt or the dahi into the meat and make sure the meat is evenly coated. Yogurt is an excellent meat tenderizer. It gently tenderizes the meat and it also helps the meat cook faster. I love using yogurt as a marinade because it gives a creamy texture to the curry and it also gives a tangy taste to the curry as well. Next you're going to need about two large onions. I like to use the purple or the red onion because of its vibrant and beautiful color but you could use any of the white or the yellow onions as well. It wouldn't really matter. We're going to cut one and half of the onions into thin slices and we're going to save the other half to make some onion paste. We are also going to need some ginger garlic paste. Next, you're going to need about two large potatoes. We're going to peel the potatoes and cut them into one and half inch cubes. I like to cut my potatoes into smaller pieces, but if you'd like, you can cut them into larger pieces. When you cook them in the pressure cooker, potatoes will become super soft and they will almost melt in your mouth. They also help add a very nice creamy texture to your curry. Next, we're going to need some powder spices, some coriander powder, some cumin powder, some red chili powder, some turmeric powder, some garam masala powder, and lastly, some salt. And then you're going to need some ghee. This is one of my favorite ingredients. Ghee is readily available at any grocery stores, but if you can't find them or don't have them, you can substitute ghee with melted butter but I personally prefer the taste of ghee over melted butter. Ghee is just like coconut oil. In a cooler temperature, it has the solidified creamy texture, but once heated or in a warmer temperature, it becomes more like an oil texture. Now let's start cooking. As I mentioned before, I'll be cooking the goat curry in a pressure cooker. So here's my stovetop pressure cooker and I'm adding some cooking oil to it and then I'll be adding the ghee into it. Once the ghee and the oil mixture is hot, I will start adding the whole spices. I like to break the cinnamon stick into half to help the flavor infuse better. Once 
I also like to open up the cardamom pods a little bit before I put them in the oil. Now I'm going to give the whole spices a quick occasional stir and let it cook for a few minutes. Once the spices are cooked and became brown like this, go ahead add the sliced onions. Let the onion cook for a few minutes until it's translucent and then we're going to go ahead and add the ginger garlic paste to it. Now give it a good mix and let it cook for a little bit as well. At this point we're cooking on a medium to high heat. Once the ginger garlic paste is a little cooked, we're going to add in the onion paste and we're going to let it cook for a little bit. We're going to let the water from the onion paste dry a little before we can start adding the other spices. When the oil starts to separate from the mixture, we're going to start adding the powder spices. Once we added the powder spices, we're going to lower the heat to medium to low heat. Now give everything a good mix. One of the most important part of cooking this curry is to let the spices cook really well before we can add in the meat. We just have to be really patient and take our time to slowly cook the spice. This is to prevent the curry from having a strong smell and flavor of raw spices. Also keep a close eye at the spices so that they don't get burned. This is why we're cooking them on low heat. It's okay for your spices to look a little dry. You can add some water to it. Add a little bit of water at a time. If you need more water, you can always add more water later. You can repeat the process until the spices are completely cooked. I needed to add water about twice and each time I added about one fourth cup of water. Uh, you can adjust it according to your needs. For the spices to be completely cooked, it may take about 10 to 15 minutes. Once the spices and the oil start to separate, you can start adding the goat meat. Now mix in the meat with all the spices and we're going to let the meat cook for about 5 to 6 minutes. Now at this point, we're going to increase the heat to high heat again. It is very important to let the meat cook in the spices properly for a few minutes before we add in any water. This will help the meat soak in the flavor from the spices and it will also give the meat time to release all the water that's in the meat. That way, it will be easier for you to estimate how much water you will need to cook the meat. I like my curry to have a little reddish color to it. That's why I'm adding a little bit of paprika, but this step is completely optional. You can totally skip this if you want. After about five to seven minutes of cooking the meat, we're going to add in the potatoes. And we're going to let the potatoes cook in the spices for about one to two minutes. After cooking the potatoes for about a few minutes, we're going to add in the water at this point. I'm starting off with one cup first, and then I'm going to mix it and add a little bit more water. Now, depending on how much meat you're cooking, you will need to adjust the amount of water you add. Now, the rule of thumb that I use when I'm cooking in a pressure cooker is I put enough water to cover all the meat. This trick usually gives me the perfect amount of curry and cooks the meat beautifully. Now up to this point, the process of cooking in a pressure cooker or a regular pot would be the same. But from this point on, I'll be putting on the cover for my pressure cooker and I'll let it cook for about 40 to 50 minutes in my pressure cooker that I'm using and that turns out perfect every time for about two and a half to three pounds of meat. But if you're cooking it in a regular pot, you would start cooking it at this point with a cover on and put the heat to medium and cook it for at least one and a half to two hours. It might take longer depending on what kind of texture you want your meat to have or how tender you want your meat to be. You may need to add more water as you go, add a little bit at a time so that you don't have too much water left at the end. 
Now if you're cooking in an instant pot, the timing will be a little bit different. It will take about an hour and 15 minutes. If you like it to be even more tender, then you can increase the timing as you like. After 45 to 50 minutes, turn off the stove. Once the pressure cooker unlocks, add in a little bit more of the garam masala powder. This will help elevate the flavor a bit more. You don't have to cook any farther after this. Just give it a good mix and then you're all done. So here's the finished product. You can serve this with a side of white or brown rice, biryani, or even some naan. I hope you guys enjoyed this recipe and found this recipe helpful. If you guys have any questions about this recipe, please leave them in the comments below. You can also check out our blog where I have put all the details about this recipe, including the ingredient list and some tips and tricks as well. Don't forget to subscribe and follow us on Instagram. All the links will be given down below in the description box, so check that out. Thank you for watching. We'll see you guys next time. Bye!